What's good, everybody? It's AJ here again, and today I want to make a video again on more formatting for the Python version 3 print statement. And so in this video, I hope to cover what the power of how you can use the format function in Python to make your um, Python look very nice and print things out nicely. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start make a print structure, and I'm going to print out 34.56789. And I'm going to print out A here. And so when I print this out, again, I'm just going to, just as a baseline, I'm going to get 34.5876989, the exact number I printed out. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make another print statement. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to instead, I'm going to make a string this time. And what I'm going to use here is the format method. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a dot Z, I'm going to do a, um, I'm going to do a left brace, zero, followed by a left right brace, and then I'm going to do a dot format. And what I'm going to do for this dot format is I am going to get rid of those arguments that were automatically made by me. And what I'm going to do is I am going to say what I want to get printed out. I want to say A, I want A to get printed out. So what's going to happen again is that. I'm going to run this program, sorry I got a little distracted, and I get the same thing. I was able to do that. So doing that changed absolutely nothing. But when I want to show you guys the power of the format is, is that every single argument is linked up to the order of which I put them in this variable method. So what I mean by that is it's very easy to print out um, multiple things. So for instance, if I wanted to do zero, z if I wanted to print out um, a twice, I just have to do this, the bracket zero, zero, and then the brackets with zero in it again. And then if I run this program, I'll bring my little terminal up so I can show you guys. If I run this program again, I get 34.34 and I didn't have to write A again. And something I also want to point out is I have this zero in between it. And that zero is actually important because in computers, um, something that is very important to understand in computers is that computers start at zero. Computers only at their very basic level know zeros or ones, which is called binary. And so computers start at zero and, and um, keep going up. And so that is definitely an important concept to understand. And so let's say I had another variable that was B, and that was just equal to 23, my favorite player, Michael Jordan. And so if I wanted to print out, you know, this one, if I wanted to print out B, what I could do is I could give format a comma, and then I could give it B. And so now I'm going to print out A twice, and then I'm going to do a comma, and then I'm going to print out B. Let me show you guys the terminal again. And so I printed out 34 a couple of spaces, which you can see in my print statement. Then I printed the 34 out again, and then a comma and a 23. So as you can see, it's really easy to reuse variables because the zero, the zeros refer to the A, and the one refers to a B. So I could easily print out the same variable twice if I had to reiterate that variable a few times in my print statement, which is very nice. So now another thing is there are a couple of ways to be able to do some um, pretty specific things in in Python. So for instance, one thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to make the B variable very long. I'm going to make it, well, I'm just going to make it bigger. I'm going to make it 23, uh, 239,875. And what I'm going to do, and the reason because I'm going to do that is because I'm going to show you guys some cool things. So for instance, um, another way to, a way to format, again, in Python 3 is we can put more features in beside these braces besides the zeros and the ones. But before that, we want to do a colon between all of them. We want to do a colon with if we want to do advanced formatting. And there's a few things you can do. For instance, one thing you can do is, let's say I for A, for the variable A, I only wanted a certain number of decimals to be shown. Let's say I only wanted three decimals to be shown. Well, what I could do is I could list it as a, I could do dot three, and then I could do F. And what that is going to do is it's going to say, okay, hey, you, you're a, f f the f, f stands for float, which is what a is, and I'm only going to have three decimals, three decimal places after the number allowed. So for instance, as you can see here, 
I could get rid of this. I changed this print three, which is the second print three right here, this 34.587. So instead of printing out the 8.9, it now only prints out the 5.68. So I made it two. Just to show you guys, I'm going to change it to two, and I'm going to run it again. And see, now I only have two places. So that's pretty cool. Something else I also want to show you guys is I'm going to do the same thing with B. Except let's say for B, I wanted a feature that... Um, I wanted commas for every thousands place, you know, to make the number kind of look cool. Well, something I could do is I could, after the colon, I could give it a comma. And what that would do is it puts a comma between every thousands place. It doesn't matter how long number the bit, how big the number is, it will automatically put the commas for you. I just made B bigger, and see, now I have two commas there. So it did that explicitly. Let's say I have a huge number with decimals. How would I do this? Well, I need the comma, then I need the dot, and then I need the de number of decimal places. We'll give it one, and then I need the F, making it a float. You need it in this order. It's just the way it has to be. It must be after the colon, the comma must come first. And so when I run this, I then get a, I, know, I then get, um, 0.43 instead. So you can see here, I don't, I didn't print out the 354 at the very end of B. So that is very powerful. Let's see, <clears throat> another thing I can do is, hi guys, I'm back again, sorry. Another thing you can do is you can list how much space you want in between the variables. So I just had a little practice example there, but now I'll show you guys. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to make this a little bit more simpler. By now, I'm only going to print out B. So I'm going to get rid of that print statement, and I'm going to get rid of the, the print statement on line 6. So now we just have this baby to focus on. So what I want to do is here, I want to say no matter what number B prints out, I want to print out, I'm going to get rid of this here and put a zero right here. No, ma no matter what number B prints out, I want 20 spaces for this number. I want 20 spaces to be used up in this number. Maybe I have some clear formatting I want to do. And what you can do is before the comma, you can give it any integer you want, any positive integer. So 20, 1, anything. And so if I give it 20, you'll notice something. If I gave it 20, the number slid over a few slots. And what happened is... I gave it 20 spaces to use up. I said, "Hey, this number has to use up 20 spaces." So, if you don't have 20 if you don't have 20 slots, what you do is you slide over 20 20 you slide over um, till you get to the 20th space and then you fill the rest in what's before it was spaces. Now, there are other ways to center this. There are ways to center um, or align what you want. So let's say I wanted all the spaces to the right and I wanted the number all the way to the left. What you could do is you could give it a left arrow right before the 20, right before the number, and then it will go to the right of the 20, is 20 spaces. So it's only doing the 20 spaces, what I'm highlighting right here. See my computer recognizes I only did 20 spaces. And if you want to align it back to the right, which is the default as I just showed you, you can do that. It gets to the right, you can just be more explicit. And now my favorite feature, if you want to center it, you use kind of the up arrow, the middle arrow, and that will go boom, that will center it for you. Another feature you can use is the sign feature, which again, I just kind of failed because I practiced it right before I did this. Another feature you can use is the sign field, which is how to show your sign. So before, after, so between, between, you know, you ha it, all these rules are specific. The computer is checking them, the function is checking them in a very specific order, order. They must be in this order. If you don't have one of these features, if you don't need them, it's okay. You can omit them, but you must have it in this order if you have the feature. So if I don't have a comma, I still need to have it. It still needs to be 20.2f. Or if I don't have a 20 and a plus and a uh, up error, they still must be in the right order. What the plus means, and it must be after your uh, align indicator, which was the arrows I just showed you guys, is if I want to recognize positivity and negativity. So if I put a plus here, it will, my number will give me a plus right before it if it's positive, and it will give me, let me make this number negative, it will give me a negative number if it's negative. So that's kind of weird. Usually you don't write plus if a number is positive. So another option you can give it if you've been thinking hard is the minus operation. And what the minus operation does is, let me make this number positive again, is it only marks a number if it's negative. So there you go. I ran it again, and the number was positive, and it didn't give me anything. So now I'm going to make B negative again. And what's it's going to do, what it is going to do is it's going to only recognize the negativity, and it's going to put that nice negative sign before it in the nice string. So that's pretty cool. 
And so when the last thing I have to show you guys, and this is kind of the last indicator you can use, is that you can um, fill up your string. And what I mean by that is I can put so I can put a character right before I can put a character right before the uh, alignment sign, which is the carrots, the carrot left or right carrot. And I can say what I want if I have extra spaces, what do I want to fill those extra spaces with? So when I run this, as you can see, I put this underscore mark here. My whole, tw all my 20, the rest of my spaces, which it looks like I used up 16 spaces, the four, or five, 15 spaces, the five, I, five underscores were put, you know, around my, around my number to make up the 20 spaces in total. And so also, let's try something that I had, let's try a longer sequence than just that. Let's try AB and see if it accepts it. No, it did not accept it. You can only have one character surrounding them, guys. That's why it's good to always try new things. So these are I, these are all the characters you may want to use in your strings. So you can choose how many spaces you want. So if you if you're printing out multiple strings, you can say, "Hey, I want every string to only to contain 20 spaces." So you know it kind of looks nicely formatted when you print them out line after line after line after line after line. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. And if you have any questions, please print below. I'll have the sample code on GitHub.